Hello, good evening. It's March 4, 2013, and my name is Stephen Enti, and you're welcome to PM Express. Now, they have been described as lawless, and their selected boycott of parliament unconstitutional. As they await the Supreme Court's verdict on their election dispute petition, the minority has held on to their conviction of not legitimizing President John Muhammad's win, thereby refusing to participate in governance actions involving the president. Hold before the law calls the minority risks losing their place in the August House, even before their four-year term expires. Politically, this majority suit against the minority has been called laughable, but laughable is even mild. Tonight, we'll explore the legal angles of this case. Is it indeed a test of democracy or a mere waste of the judicial process? Does the majority's actions smack of hypocrisy? And can the minority seats be annulled? Tonight, our analysts uh, will debate all the angles here on PM Express. And you can be part of the show by text. 15, or post your comments on our Facebook walls, facebook.com slash joynews. Or if you're active on Twitter, you can send us a tweet at joynews on TV. And if you're on WhatsApp, you can send us a WhatsApp message if you have your tablets or smartphones handy at 0544-3347-22. And we'll be very glad to read your comments. Tonight, my guest in the studio to my immediate left is Dr. Ziblim Idi. Dr. Idi is a political scientist. And then next to him, I have Gary Francis Nimako Marfo, who is a lawyer. And then next to, next to Gary, I have James Agalga. James is a lawyer and also an NDC MP. Well, he's a member of parliament from the NDC side from uh, Bursa North. So let's now see why I said that um, the, the majority suit has been described as laughable, and laughable is even mild. Inept. <laughs> Inept. <laughs> Those who are on their way to court, the smacks of ineptitude of the highest order. Indeed, perhaps I must quote Mr. Pini, I must choose his word, intellectual laziness. Uh. It, what is the basis? Tell me. You are a lawyer, educate me. <laughs> quote to me, standing orders, the constitution, where, where, where are they going? Mm. To court mm. or to a chop bar? Mm. Eh? Why are we wasting time in this country doing things that are not necessary? But in any case, is their right to proceed to court? Mm. And if the court tells them that they've come to abuse the judicial process, I hope appropriate sanctions in wow. terms of cost are imposed on them. So next time, people will think hard. Well, that was uh, Malik Kwekubako Jr., who was speaking on News File over the weekend. So, gentlemen, it's great to have you in the studio. <laughs> uh, this, this has been described as laughable, uh, and I'm not sure what your preliminary comments will be. Let me start from you, yeah, uh, Agaga. Honorable Agaga. I mean, uh, what will be your preliminary comments on this, this uh, suit before the Supreme Court? Well, thank you very much. I We're grateful that, if you could speak louder. Yes, yeah. I think that my preliminary remarks are very simple. Mm -hmm. um, I heard Malik Kwekubaku, um, you know, outburst. He says um, he wonders whether the, um, you know, plaintiffs in that suit, which is currently pending before yeah. the Supreme Court, which suit seeks certain declarations, which borders on the boycott. Um, backed upon by the minority MPs in Parliament is unconstitutional and so on. And he says that, I mean, it, the, the, he would describe their action as something amounting to mental laziness and so on. He wants to borrow the words of Kwame Pienim. But in this, this contest, I must say that Mr. Kwekubaku has gotten it all wrong. These are citizens of Ghana who think that the action of the minority MPP MPs in Parliament violates certain provisions of our Constitution. They have been very specific. They have come under Article 64.2 of the Constitution. They have come under Article 100 of the Constitution. 
which, to, which deals with the oaths of members of parliament. Now, the oath of a member of parliament is spelled out in very clear language. And so I would say that if Mr. Kweku Baku had taken his time to go through those provisions of our constitution, he probably would have spoken differently. But he's entitled to his views. And so why don't we wait and allow the Supreme Court to do its work? It is not for him to prejudge or attempt to prejudice the minds of the court. A matter is pending before the court. And I think that time without number, we have had occasion to caution members of the public against making comments which have the potential of prejudicing the outcome of suits pending before the, 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 the courts. Now, this very action which has uh, uh, been brought by three Ghanaians clearly uh, seeks some constitutional interpretation. No other court than the Supreme Court, the highest court of the land, is seized with the matter. And so when we come out and, and, and describe the entire suit as a product of mental laziness, I, I think that it's unfortunate. We must allow our institutions to work. It is only the Supreme Court which can make that pronouncement that the action initiated it's by the three, the three Ghanaians amounts to intellectual laziness. It is not for any other member of the public. So those comments, I think, that uh, are born out of ignorance and should, and should clearly be condemned in no uncertain terms. Gary, your preliminary comments <laughs> yes, on, uh, on <laughs> this whole uh, description of the court case as laughable. Yes, I tend to share the view expressed by Mr. Koku Bako. Um, I don't, I'm not too sure whether the rate has been filed. Because I don't see any street number here. If my learned friend may, may advise me whether it has been filed. So we don't, we don't tend to make any prejudicial comments here. Has it been filed? Yes, the action has been filed. Well, I don't yeah, see any street number here. There's a press release to that effect yeah. that uh, the, the three citizens have today filed a writ well. to invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court it, of Ghana if it has been to filed, make a declaration. If it has been filed, then I will not go into okay, the merits. So I think it was last year, not the merits, the merits of the matter, so to speak. But uh, broadly speaking, I think executive power, judicial power, uh, legislative power are all provided by the Constitution. If you look at Chapter 8 of the Constitution, you will realize that executive power is vested in the President of the Republic of Ghana. Now, legislative power is also vested in, in the, the, the legislature and shall be exercised by parliament and parliament alone. Judicial power is vested in the judiciary and it shall be exercised by the judiciary without any control by anybody or any person in this country. Clearly, you can see from the onset that there are three arms of government, the legislature, executive and judiciary. It's very clear. Each of these powers exercise their powers distinctively, uniquely, without any coercion or any power from any other, any other, any other quarters. Now, what is very clear, must all, they must all collaborate and interrelate. Now, the media is the fourth of the, of the realm. That's what we have in our constitution. So separation of powers is very clear in our constitution. So I really doubt how the Supreme Court sitting there will begin to now veer into matters which are internal parliaments. Matters internal parliament. How would the Supreme Court be veering matters internal parliament? Because if you look at the constitution, it's very clear that matters internal parliament, the standing order of the parliament must deal with it. They must deal with it. So how would the Supreme Court now be veering into matters internal parliament for which my brother sitting here will now be able to choose the Supreme Court? I really doubt. So preliminary, I would just say that we have, this, we have the executive power, the judicial power, legislative power, all of the various <coughs> of governments, and they operate independently and distinctively. And each of these powers must be exercised in this country mm -hmm. without any other authority trying to coerce its power on the other. Now, if parliament, for one reason or the other, passed a law which is retroactive, if parliament passed a law which is ultra virus, the constitution, then the Supreme Court can come in and say, look, this, power, this law is ultra virus, and therefore we're going to strike it down. Save that. I don't see how... <laughs> Matters internal parliament can be the hub for the Supreme Court 
for, for judicial interpretation. James, let's refer to the matters internal parliament that uh, Gary is referring to. Is this the reason why you are hauling the minority before the Privileges Committee for close to the same reasons, really? Um, well, the... I mean, you, you sought to use the internal mechanisms and processes it, it, of parliament but that is... to deal with it rather than join the suit. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I think that the issues are quite distinct. I mean, you can draw the line. Presently, I do not want to discuss the merits or otherwise of the complaint I have before the Speaker of Parliament. But essentially... Why? Why don't you want to discuss uh, no, what no, no, prevents that the you? Is, is there a standing order that prevents you from mm -hmm. doing that? Uh, sure. I mean, the, the best, best practices in Parliament uh, clearly would require of me to show a little bit of uh, some restraint. Really? and allow the matter to be dealt with by the speaker. Mm -hmm. And then I can come out and discuss the matters in the open. But the gist of, you know, what I have before the speaker has to do with some internal conduct of certain members of the House of Parliament. Uh, when the president arrived in Parliament on the 21st of September uh, 2013 to deliver the State of the Nation address. And so it is the conduct that some members put up on that occasion that, in my view, may have contravened certain provisions in our standing orders. And so I have put the matter before the speaker for, 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 for action. That is distinguishable from the action taken by the three citizens of the land. I mean, those Sum Sumaila, issues... Sumaila, Biel, Biel, George, uh, Samuel yeah. George, and George Spencer. They, yes, they yes, are the these are citizens yeah. of the land. And they have brought their, their action in that capacity, as citizens of the land who think that the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court mm. should be invoked. So you think that this is in order? And, and, uh, nice. and, and you think it's not... Well, let, me, not. let, me, let, me, yeah, quickly, sure. let me quickly say that the standing orders, I mean, themselves, are a creature of the Constitution. Yeah. They are born out of the Constitution. For instance, um, Article 110. Yes, 110. Clearly, I mean, as the uh, source of the standing orders, it reads as follows subject to the provisions of this Constitution. And, and, and we must place our emphasis on subject to the provisions of this Constitution. Parliament may, by standing orders, regulate its own procedure. Now, what this means, in very plain language, is that the standing orders are subordinate to the Constitution. And so, as a matter of fact, somebody could even go to court and contest the constitutionality of certain provisions in the standing orders themselves. Now, what I guess the three citizens have done is to um, say that some conduct of certain minority MPs in Parliament contravenes certain provisions of our Constitution, and that the Supreme Court should make that finding and give us an interpretation as to whether the conduct of the minority MPP MPs in subscribing to the oath of Parliament, which also has its basis in Article 100 of the Constitution, and failing to uphold certain provisions of the Constitution, namely Article 64.2. Remember that 64.1 is the provision the MPP, no, certain leading members of the MPP, including Nana Adodankwa Kufado, the uh, presidential candidate of the MPP in the last elections, have invoked, you know, in, in, in their bid to contest the validity of the election. Uh, um, Honourable Gaga, let me pause you there and, and get your preliminary comment, uh, Dr. Dr. Zulun. You seem to have been sandwiched mm -hmm. uh, in between the lawyers. But yeah, politically, I mean, this, this court case has been described as laughable. From where you stand as a political scientist, uh, do you think it is so? I mean, politically, is this a wise decision? <laughs> Well, first of all, let me say uh, good evening to your viewers. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, being so yeah. with the lawyers. I'm very comfortable. Uh, first of all, I think what you see on your screen is a majority suit. Mm. And uh, I'm not sure whether the majority will say that the suit being filed 
by the three citizens uh, represent majority. what the majority wants to do. I think they may, as we sit here tonight, may be members of the majority who do not necessarily agree with, mm -hmm. with, with that. So I think we have to uh, clarify that. Uh, and if you listen to my senior brother, Kweku Bako, he actually conceded Mm. That Actually, the, 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 I mean, the, the, the topic is just to clarify that uh, the case the case before the Supreme Court was filed for the NDC. I mean, I, I know that these are three individuals, yeah. but they all have Well, even they, I'm not sure whether they file it mm. for the NDC or in the name of the NDC. But be that as it may, I was just going to say that Kweku Baku concedes that as citizens of Ghana, mm. they reserve the right to go into court uh, and file for any interpretation of the Constitution uh, as they deem fit uh, before the Supreme Court. Uh, but uh, I think in this country we have to be very careful. Uh, we are developing a democracy and some of us get worried uh, the quality of the political discourse and the nature of how people are going about the whole democratic process that we are you know, all working at development. Uh, you don't go to the Supreme Court and ask the Supreme Court to annul parliamentary seats. You know, sort of asking the Supreme Court to remove those MPs from parliament. Mm -hmm. If you are a serious, well, I don't want to say a serious lawyer, uh, but, um, but I will say that because then they were advised by a lawyer. By I think a lawyer. They, a, a lawyer filed this on, on, on their behalf. Now, I think my brother here started by laying out what is called separation of powers. Mm -hmm. That is the principal bulwark of any democracy. Separation of powers, checks and balances. Yeah. Let's start with separation of powers so that no mm. arm of government can invade the space of the other. Mm. So that this arms of government are not only separate, but equal. And to the extent that they are equal, no one arm can supersede and go and dictate to the another arm. And so parliament can no go, cannot go to the Supreme Court and dictate to judges what they sh should do. And judges cannot come to parliament and dictate to parliamentarians what they should do. So applies to the executive arm. Now, if you look at the case before us, Three citizens going before the Supreme Court, asking the court to interpret clauses and provisions of the Constitution. But they forget that in that same Constitution, there is a provision that talks about grounds for removal of a parliamentarian. Are they seeking interpretation of any clause or provision of that article of the Constitution? Grounds for removal of a parliamentarian. So let's look at that first. Mm -hmm. If that is so, then they are, they are within the remit of the court for the court to interpret the clauses and the provisions that talks about the grounds for removal of an MP. If the answer is no, uh, then on what basis are they seeking this action or interpreting from the court? I think people forget that the Supreme Court, I mean, sorry, the Constitution is a supreme law of the land. But that same constitution says that power of the state is vested in the people. So the constitution is just a document. But power is vested in the people, not in the Supreme Court. So that if the people so elected a member of parliament, it is not for the Supreme Court to remove that member of parliament. Because power is vested in the, those people who elected the member of parliament. And so if any member of parliament so acts in ways that violates or offends the provision of the constitution that gives grounds for removal of parliament, then you can go before the Supreme Court and they will, based on interpreting that, recommend that that member of parliament should be removed. Beyond that, the Supreme Court cannot basically look at clauses of the constitution, and I've I read the read, uh, I don't have it before me, uh, but they have made reference to several areas of the constitution, uh, even actually asking the court to interpret the oath of a parliamentarian, and that what they are doing is in violation of the law. I started by saying that I get worried about the quality of how we are going about developing this democracy because 
what is going on as far as the minority is concerned? And I think sometimes as Ghanaians, we all get caught up in the political noise and we don't look at the substance of what is going on both in parliament and outside of parliament and in the Supreme Court. The minority have time without number explained to Ghanaians that they have set for themselves a clear distinction between certain things or I that they think will go if the president, that is if should the Supreme Court rule that the president, uh, I mean the declaration mm -hmm. should be overturned. Uh, and that as far as those matters come before parliament, they will not participate. But any other matter that will continue to stay, even if the president, his excellency Dormama, were to be removed, then they will participate in that discussion. Now, that tells you that if you go to parliament on a daily basis, you will see them sitting there. And as they sit there, they will then begin to distinguish between which falls within what category and where should we find ourselves participating. So they participate in committee meetings, they participate in parliamentary debate, and some of the clauses that But this selective participation, mm -hmm. is it fair, is it right, I mean, for members of parliament who, like you said, have been elected to represent their constituency, choose which part of the parliamentary processes I think the they other will day, engage in? <laughs> that was a Tuesday, the other day I told yeah. you that for you and I, it's not fair. Morally, because we are looking at it from that moral perspective. It's not fair. Now, they are politicians, and they know how they got power, and they know how to behave once they have power. Now, if they think that the way they are going about it serves a certain interest, which for them is paramount, then what you and I will think in terms of the moral implication of what they are doing, they, they, they don't see anything wrong with it. Now, as to whether you can transcend it from the moral to constitutional, then that's where the problem is. So if the three people were in the court of public opinion, pushing for the public to rise up against what an act that they think offends moral whatever of this country, then I can understand that. But you know, I think to take it all the way to the Supreme Court, and, and I'm not sure who the, their lawyer is, uh, so you would say it's ill-advised? Oh, I, I, well, I think the words that Kweku Baku used, I will not use it. But yes, I think that they were not advised rightly by their counsel. To the extent that anybody can go to the Supreme Court and seek for clarification or interpretation of the Constitution, as citizens of Ghana, they reserve that right. Right. Uh, but we should not, and that is why I was saying that I'm con con uh, sort of concern uh, that these are young, I know some were George, mm -hmm. Bebe, this, they are young, and that's, if we really want to take this democracy seriously, there are certain things we should, we shouldn't take politics and go everywhere with it. You don't go to the Supreme Court and put something before it, that smacks of politics, but not seriously seeking mm -hmm. interpretation of provisions of a constitution uh, that somebody has offended uh, and, and, and you want, uh, you know, measures to be taken and all of that. Uh, so uh, I think I agree with the Honorable Agalga that mm. uh, it is before the court, it's only the court that can pronounce, uh, but we also as citizens of Ghana uh, still reserve the right, freedom, mm. to express certain opinions as long as those opinions do not prejudice uh, the, the case before of, the court. The court. Uh, so let me, let me shift let, sh let me shift to you, uh, Gary. Uh, let's begin to take apart the articles of this suit. Uh, I read I read the relief, uh, just a, a small summary of the relief that the three gentlemen are seeking. They say that the plaintiffs seek the following reliefs in this honourable court: a declaration that on a true and proper interpretation of articles 46 58 163 64 1 and 2 78 193 200 103 125 1 and 3 and 127 of the 1992 constitution the conduct of all the new patriotic party members of parliament in boycotting parliamentary consideration of all <coughs> matters brought to parliament <coughs> for consideration by president john dramani mahama is unconstitutional and b an annulment of the seats of all the new patriotic party members of parliament and c any consequential orders uh, the supreme court may deem uh, meet so i mean my point is that they, they've more like you know made reference to 
almost every single article in the Constitution, really. 46, 58, 163, 64, 1 and 2, 78, 193, 200, 103, 125, 1 and 3 and 127. So let's, let's tear it apart. Let me start with you, um, uh, Gary. 46. Let me, and let, me, let, me, let, me, let me be very careful. Since my brother said the matter has been, has been filed, mm -hmm. so that if the matter has been filed, we don't discuss the matter with the sub judicate. Okay. So, so um, what can we discuss? Um, I will just, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, do, do the, the face value of it. That's fine. Then go into the merits properly so called. That's fine. That's uh, because very I don't fine. want to be so, held in contempt of the Supreme Court. That's fine. Uh, so let's focus on. So um, uh, basically, the 46 yeah. deals with the fact that uh, the EC uh, uh, is, is an independent authority and shall not be subject to the control and authority of any other person in this country. Uh, the 58 is talking about the fact that executive power is vested in the president of Ghana and it shall be exercised in accordance with the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Uh, 64 talks about the, 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 the fact that uh, the validity of a president can be challenged in the Supreme Court and uh, upon a representative of, of, of a petition before the, before the court within the, a period of 21 days. And then uh, the 64 two also talks about the fact that uh, on the Supreme Court this, this declares otherwise. All acts done by the president uh, without prejudice are all deemed lawful. Are all deemed lawful. Um, 93, you see, if I, they, 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 they quote so many provisions. Yes, exactly. I was looking, I was, I was looking that to ground an action uh, of the Supreme Court, you go by Article 2 1 mm -hmm. and Article 130 of the Constitution. The 2 1 provides any citizen of Ghana who thinks that the Constitution is being violated may challenge it in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, you come by Article 130, that involves the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court itself. But I didn't see 130, so, but I think uh, that one, my brother will have to just go and look at it, and then if he thinks it's proper. No, uh, there's no, there was uh -huh. no 130. I didn't see 130, because I was looking at Article 2, 1, and Article 130. That actually grounds Supreme Court jurisdiction, or original jurisdiction on the question of interpretation. Mm -hmm. Now, look at all these articles which have been thrown in, thrown in and all this. Basically, what I want to say is that let's look at the first point, whether the minority have, have boycotted all matters before, the, before Parliament. Is it all matters or some matters? Because we have heard many, many times that they only boycotted the, the vetting and not all matters. If it's only the vetting, then they cannot say that they have boycotted all matters but before Parliament by the President of Ghana. I don't want to go into the merits of the matter, yeah. but this is one matter which I think, you know, we have to look at it. It's a bucket of all matters. Now they say they want to participate in the, in the budget. It means they have not bucketed all matters. Huh. You see, the selective choosing of some matters, other matters, is a matter for, I think, they themselves to decide as to why they decide to choose some matters, other matters, whatever. But if you look at the body of the, of the rate, they say they bucketed all matters. But it's clearly they haven't put a bucket at all matters. So there's a problem here. Honorable Agaga, um, you have something to say, then we'll take a quick break. And yes, um, well, I'm listening to Dr. E.D., right? Yeah. Um, I must say that I'm really at a loss as to, you know, what the basis of uh, their assertions are. I thought that. Um, in doing this discussion, we would confine ourselves to the provisions of the Constitution and then determine whether the action brought by the three citizens of and, the and land... And are, are we not? You don't think we are? I mean, no, well, I, 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 I have discussion. heard them talk about separation of powers in a very generalized context. <coughs> For instance, it is true that, yes, the three arms of government are separate. But under our constitution, I must say that really if our reason for saying that the action before the Supreme Court is laughable is merely because the citizens have gone to the Supreme Court to I mean, seek an enforcement of the constitution in relation to certain provisions of the constitution, 
then we've gotten it all wrong. Because who says actions of parliament as an arm of government cannot be contested in court when those actions are found to be in conflict with provisions of the Constitution? I mean, that thinking, if we allow it to stand, it would mean that, yes, we don't have any regard for the supremacy of the Constitution, and that the, 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 the Constitution itself is the framework, you know, of, 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 of governance. You see? So we, we, we have to be very careful the way and manner we, we want to, you know, dismiss the suit which is pending before the Supreme Court by describing it with those kinds of, you know, words. It's very dangerous and we must be cautious uh, here. Now, look, he talked about uh, interpretation. Who says the action before the Supreme Court invokes its original jurisdiction to interpret certain provisions of the Constitution? What do we make of the Article, I mean, 2 1? 2 1 talks about the enforcement of the Constitution. And all they are seeking to do is to say that, listen, certain acts by certain minority MPs in Parliament violate certain provisions of our Constitution. And they have told us which provisions in the Constitution have been violated. They have told us. Let me take you through Article 2. It says, a person who alleges that an act or anything done, contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment, or B, any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this Constitution, may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. Now, two goes on to say, the Supreme Court shall, for the purposes of a declaration under clause one of this article, make such orders and give such directions as it may consider appropriate for giving effect or enabling effect to be given to the declarations so made. He talks about the fact that the Constitution itself contains uh, certain provisions which can be invoked to remove members of parliament. And so he wonders whether the action brought by the three Ghanaians is seeking to invoke those provisions and remove them. Then he seemed to suggest that if that was uh, what their action is intended to achieve, then they ought to have said so expressly. Now, let me just say quickly that um, the provisions I have read, the provisions contained in Article 2, clearly clothes the Supreme Court with that power to make certain declarations and to give further directions with a view to giving effect to those declarations made. And so, assuming without attempting to prejudice the outcome of the matter pending before the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court were to say, look, the actions or omissions of the, um, you know, the uh, respondents or defendants is unconstitutional. Then the court would have the power to go on and give further directives to with the view to uh, giving effect to provision. those declarations made. Now, if the Supreme Court deems it, deems it fit to go on to say, look, by virtue of your unconstitutional conduct, the way to give effect to his declaration is to declare that you, having so acted unconstitutionally, having gone contrary to the very oath of office you have subscribed to, you should cease to be a member of parliament. Then it would be within the purview of its oh, no, well, 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 um, James, I'll give you time to react, but we'll take, a quick, squarely, we'll take a quick break. It will within and, the powers of uh, the uh, court when we to return, do so. I'll give you the chance to, to react. You can send us your text, 1760. Post your comments on our Facebook or facebook.com slash joynews. And then if you're on Twitter, our Twitter handle is joynews on TV. You can send us a tweet. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Welcome back to PM Express, and we're discussing the majority suits, the suit brought uh, to the Supreme Court by three individuals, Sumaila Biel Biel, uh, Samuel George, and George Spencer, who are seeking certain reliefs from the Supreme Court uh, in relation to specific articles of the Constitution. And I have with me in the studio uh, Dr. Zibulim Idi, who is a political scientist. Jim Zagago is MP for Bunsan North, and Gary Francis Nimako Mafo is a lawyer. So, um, Dr. Edi, Dr. I'll give you the chance to react to uh, Honorable Agaga uh, on some of the issues that he raised earlier before we went on the break. Okay, well, let, let me just say again that uh, in other jurisdictions, and I will be very specific, in advanced democracies, mm -hmm. this matter will not attract the attention that and we the time that we are giving it. Seriously. Because, you see, I think Honorable Agarga kept saying, unconstitutional, violated the Constitution, and all of that. If you read the writ, where in the writ have they specifically and categorically stated that because of this act, they are in violation of the Constitution? Now, they made reference to the oath of Parliament. And that oath simply beholds them to uphold, defend the Constitution. So they have listed all the 125 parliamentarians from the minority, minority side. side. Are they saying that they will be able to prove before the Supreme Court that, this, that these members of parliament from the minority side have actually embarked on an act or have actually committed an act that is in violation of the Constitution, the Constitution. or a threat to the Constitution? So what I want the Honorable to understand is that we, we, we can look at the Constitution and then ask ourselves if somebody is an MP and that person should be removed from Parliament, on what grounds should they be removed? I think I raised that earlier. Yeah, you raised that idea. Mm. Now, everything that they have asked for, has not clearly stated. No, but no, but but but. Uh, sorry. Yes. I may be interjecting, but I think it's important. Uh, what Dr. Ed is simply trying to do, it, it seriously speaking, um, has some bearing on the merits. He's talking about reliefs, and you know, listening to him, it appears. He would want to give the impression that some of those reliefs are simply untenable. Now, if we go you know, to that extent of making assessments as to whether the declarations sought you know, are tenable in law or not, uh, no, we would be, seriously speaking, usurping the function of the Supreme Court. Because as I said, this matter is sub judicate. We can talk about the reliefs they are claiming safely, but to go to the extent of attempting to justify why certain declarations may be unfounded it would be uh, traveling too far. Yeah. And, uh, that's got it. I think that right. The, the lawyers we say should, we are we are, we are mm. traveling the path be of okay. mm. <laughs> Well, so I, I, I don't know if we uh, are to move forward with the discussion. Uh, what, because then, if one is to establish why you think this matter should not even be before the court or we shouldn't be discussing it, you have to justify yeah. your why. And if the advice is that uh, we won't be in contempt of court or maybe through judiciary, uh, I, I will not say that. Except to just say, and this is on a political uh, Understand that one will expect the majority to just as they are not happy with the behavior of the minority to also be careful uh, if they can't at least you can say control every member of the majority but if they will be mindful of the reaction of the public towards some of their actions too because if these three are going as far as seeking what they are seeking. Somebody may say that they are only doing that to equalize 
that they are only doing that to spite the minority, mm. and especially to draw the whole minority into the suit and hold them before the Supreme Court. Uh, I think earlier on, you were mixing up what the Honorable felt in yeah. Parliament mm. and what these people are yeah, doing. Sure. He invoked a parliamentary order, mm. a standing order of Parliament, and so he's standing on that. So he is covered by parliament, you know, the rules governing parliament. And that's fair. You say that's, that's, fair. that's a good that's thing that, to that's do. Fair. It's, it's in the bosom of the speaker, and it's for, you know, parliamentary uh, experts to look at what the order is and whether mm -hmm. they can do that. And even, but also look at the interest of consensus building in parliament. Sometimes mm -hmm. parliament don't just say, okay, the standing order says it's over. No, no, no. The speaker knows that for the next three, four years, he is going to have to manage parliament. And he wants to do that, especially on matters where he needs the other side to mm. be party to. Uh, and in do, doing that, he has to be mindful of how he goes about goes ruling about on this order. Right. Uh, so yeah. that is granted. Yeah. Mm. But this other one before the Supreme Court. Uh, <laughs> Gary, let's, let's get your... Um, uh, reactions yes, to yes, the, the issues to, that uh, uh, Agaga raised before say. we went on break, yeah. Yes, you see the, uh, the Supreme Court is not a court of first instance. It's in all matters. It's a court of appeal. Uh, but you can go there as a court of first instance, as the court's original jurisdiction, if you grant the court's uh, power on Article 2 and Article 130. The 130 will invoke the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court for a pe person who is seeking to challenge an act which is an unconstitutional act, mm -hmm. the citizens of Ghana, to so, to so do. Now, I think there might be practical challenges with this action, but as my brother is keep saying, mm -hmm. we don't need to go into the merits of the oh, matter, so to speak. Yeah. Because even with the service, how do you serve these members of parliament? Because there appears to be some immunity covering the members of parliament on their way to parliament, on their way out of parliament. So how do you even serve them the processes? But that's for them to determine, I reckon. Yes, and if you serve them these processes, and assuming that all the 123 members are in parliament, now we hold before the Supreme Court, it, it appears to me that the, 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 the parliament may not form a quorum now. No, parliament has a quorum. Now, if parliament does not form a quorum with the absence of all the members of the minority on the other side, then there will be problem in parliament. No, we have a quorum. We have been faced yeah, if, with walkouts. If, if I may, if I may, we, if we I may complete my submission. With, with walkouts, and yet Parliament functioned. If I may so complete my submission. But you are not an because MPA, I, so. I, 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 but I <laughs> ask to maintain. Yeah. Ask to maintain that these matters are matters that are internal Parliament. They are matters internal Parliament, and Parliament must use its own powers. We need to deal with the matter. This matter should not be matter that should go to the Supreme Court in the first place. It should be dealt with, dealt with in Parliament. That's my personal and humble opinion about the matter. We the Speaker of Parliament in this group self can, you know, call the minority, they will discuss it, see the way forward, and then the matter can be resolved. But the whole before Parliament, it should be before the Supreme Court, I think it's a, it's a bit problematic. That is well, my personal Well, uh, you're watching PM Express. I have a couple of messages, uh, Honorable Agaga. I'll run through them quickly, then I will give you a chance to uh, say. Alukos from Tamale says, this is completely a non-starter, but the majority can test the waters with their intended court action. But this cannot change the watertight and hardcore evidence of the minority. The people's sovereign will shall not be subvented. Alukos, I'll stop there. And then Honorable Agaga. Gaga is a very young MP and therefore must thread carefully. This is from Simon uh, from Wale Wale. Agaga seems to be rushing to make himself popular on petty issues. Simon, that's your opinion. Uh, and then uh, this is from Philo from Sunyai says that the NDC has nothing good to offer Ghanaians. They cannot do it, but still they don't want to accept and pack away their tools. And then uh, this one doesn't have a name. Says Nel sorry Nelson from Bole. You say if you throw a ball against a wall, it will surely bounce bounce back on you. I therefore urge the two major parties to be careful, especially the MPP. Nanekufado will be sworn in as president by
by next year. That is my prayer. This is from Nana AJ Sikapa from Inkoko. And then Yao from Kede. You say that has the majority instituted any court action at all. I understand the action was instituted by three individual Ghanaians. This is certainly a bad topic. That's your opinion, Yao. We have issues of power shortage, etc., to deal with. I reckon that the issues of uh, uh, parliamentary democracy and our democracy in general is also a key issue we can discuss alongside our problems of uh, utility, water, electricity, etc. Dr. Ziblim Idi, I like your comments from Sami Wenchi, uh, POSA member 2009. Posa always ahead. I reckon that uh, he's referring to an alma mater. And then Majid from Kumasi says, we, the Northerners, now knew that all the MPP are doing is looking down upon us. Uh, thanks very much, Majid. And Isifu Nuridin says, why would the MPP not legitimize the president but would choose to listen to his apprentice who is the finance minister. They should continue their boycott and wait for the court verdict. And Dari Michael says, what will happen if NDC loses in court? And McLean O'Drow says that we'd like to know the exact date of declaration from the Supreme Court. Till then, uh, we're praying, we're still praying for Ghana. Savali Kelvin says, the MPP are trying all their best to bring chaos to Ghana. They should accept defeat and respect the NDC. Foster uh, Nyapab says, if the minority think President John Mahama is illegitimate, why are they taking salaries being paid by him? Michael Howin, uh, Howim says that the most respected members of the MPP, Kwame Pielin, Dr. Reku Brobe, and Kennedy of Japan said it all. So MPP should listen or break apart. Dakpo Daniel says, NDC, you're joking. When Ghana and Asirin Katia said, if you disobey your party, you cease to be a member of parliament. Uh, Tendana <laughs> Hambali Dauda says, is it a majority suit? I think it's a suit brought by three private individuals who happen to be members of the NDC. Yes, that has been uh, very clearly made. And then Xon Akrovic says they're coming back to seek our mandate to go and do boycotting job. Why? They shouldn't dare. Uh, that's your opinion. Thank you very much. So we'll pause there. We have so many of your messages. I'm afraid time is not on our side to read all of them. So, Honorable Agalga, I mean, you've heard the various arguments that are, have been coming forth uh, from uh, Dr. E.D. and Gary. Your reactions? I think that um, essentially what we should be talking about is the propriety of the boycott and backed upon by the minority MPP MPs in parliament and the reason they have assigned for their conduct. I, I guess that is what the, I mean, plaintiffs are in court mm -hmm. and, and, and seeking to have the Supreme Court make certain declarations. I won't go into that. But let me uh, confine myself to the reasons they have given for the boycott. Look, the MPP minority MPs are simply saying that they have a petition pending before the Supreme Court. But my point really is that the NDC has used the boycott as an instrument of protest in Parliament several times. That's, that's, the reasons, that's, that's the reasons assigned, so the are reasons you not being assigned hypocritical different. when you we are not being hypocritical that, here. Uh, what MPP is doing is wrong when you've done it before? We are not being hypocritical at all. The point we are simply trying to make is that, look, you cannot selectively apply provisions of the Constitution and decide to leave some other provisions because they don't suit you. Look, the MPP is simply saying that they are in court. They are challenging the validity of the election of President Mahama under Article 64.1. Now, 64.2 goes on to say that, look, in the event that the Supreme Court declares that the election of President Mahama was not valid, and that is most unlikely, Every act done by him shall be lawful. But you are sitting here saying most unlikely. That is also yes, uh, yes. pre no, no, Of course, that it's not. It's not. Looking at the nature of the petition before the Supreme Court, I can make that statement without necessarily prejudicing the outcome of the really? suit. <laughs> but they have said forcefully. They have said forcefully. Remember, the very day, the very day Jake and the others saw so the defense of the EC. They held a press conference immediately and made certain statements that the defense was without merit and so on and so forth. 
That was their own assessment of <laughs> the, the defense filed by the EC. So what's your point? I really? am saying mm. that under Article 64.2, even in the event that the Supreme Court declares that President Mahama was not validly elected, all acts done by President Mahama shall be lawful under that provision. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, they are saying because certain acts will evaporate with President Mohammed's, I mean, uh, 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 you know, a declaration that he was not validly elected, certain acts could evaporate with him, such as the appointment of ministers and so on. They will not take part in those acts. Is it, is it, is it not unconstitutional? And Article 64.2, <laughs> if it is unconstitutional, right, because all acts done by President Mahama shall be lawful under that article, are they upholding the Constitution? Well, are they um, preserving honorable, it? And honorable, then the honorable office Gaga, time is running out by on, on, our, on, our, on our These behalf. are the uh, matters Dr. we should mm. be addressing our minds. Dr. Aidi, the plaintiffs in the press release, uh, this is the press release, uh, and I quote that the oath sworn by all members of parliament enjoins them to uphold, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Republic of of Ghana and to faithfully and conscientiously discharge their duties as members of parliament. Can we say boycotting betrays this oath as the majority is claiming? Of course not. And, and that is why the case is not something that uh, one wants to take seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, because, and I think I was asking that of the uh, honorable, that if you look at the oath that they sworn to, the 125 members of the MPP continuously upholds, defend, and protect the Constitution. <laughs> so what action of theirs is a threat to the Constitution? What action of theirs is something that you will say that's, I mean, offends the Constitution to the extent that it can lead to something bad in our democratic process? Uh, so. They, they, to, to, for them to stand on that, then you say, well, uh, the lawyers, I don't know, if they, they don't have a case, <laughs> but, but uh, if that is also subjudicial, maybe I'm, I'm sorry to the court. But seriously, seriously, mm. uh, moving forward in this democracy, I will implore our political parties to get serious, seriously, both the minority and the majority. Uh, because if elements are coming out of these political parties and they are behaving this way, uh, and then we all have to waste time and discuss it, it's not good for the. So you democracy. think you think this is a waste of judicial time, really? Oh, I no, mean, seriously, the yes, whole thing yes, going yes, to Supreme uh, Court is total waste. Well, not just judicial time, but everybody's time. Not mm. not not just uh, well mm. for the justices of the Supreme Court. I cannot make that mm. for that. I cannot. But mm. I I think that if. One wants to say that after 20 years of practicing a system, this system that we are practicing, we should have been by now at least be guided by actions that are a threat to the Constitution. Mm. Right. Now, boycotts have been, as you told him, right, yeah. to put it before him. The boy, this is not the first time that we are witnessing or seeing boycotts. Mm. Now, the very standing orders of Parliament has actually stated very clearly that members of parliament can absent themselves up to at least 14, 14 sitting days. Yeah. If they go across 15, then they will be in breach of certain standards. That will lead to the penalties, yeah. maybe removal from, yeah. from, from office and all that. Mm. So if you boycott parliament for one day, two days, three days, you are not in violation and you are not a threatening the, the very existence of the Constitution. No. Sorry. Mm, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Um, I, did you wrap no, up? No, I wanted idea. to wrap up on this. That So going forward, I think the minority should educate their colleagues from the majority side. Because I from listening to the Honorable uh, Agalaga, mm. they, they, they need to be educated on the position that the minority is taking and how that is not a threat or in violation to our constitution so that uh, people like him when they speak uh, they will respect certain things because it's not a, he said it doesn't the, the reasons they are given is different from the reasons the NDC gave well if I we go by Machiavelli the end justifies the means so if you were to serve a purpose 
and you follow certain path by giving your reasons. And they are also about to serve a purpose. And they are following their own path and giving their reasons. It's the end resource mm. that matters. And for you and I, we don't like boycotts. We don't like, you know, walkouts. And we will pray that moving forward, there will be some serious discussions on this whole matter of boycott so that parliament itself, they are the makers of their own laws and rules. I uh, will look at it and see what prescription they can make so that going forward, we will not have to come to this again. Well, uh, this one, quick one, says that uh, Mr. Host kindly asked the NDC lawyer for me as to whether he wasn't in Ghana when the NDC boycott of the State of the Nations address and parliament for 13 solid days during 2007. What was his stand then? And now this is uh, Matt from Cape Coast. And then uh, this one says Mr. Gaga uh, seems to be confused. He needs to be schooled. And then uh, this one also says that I kindly ask, well, I've read this already. Um, and then, um, oh, Ghana, because of politics, great minds are lost. Ms. Gaga, NDC, have shown great intellectual dishonesty, NDC, uh, mediocrity at its best, uh, Pim Daco. I'm, I'm afraid uh, we will not be able to read all your text messages that are coming in, but we're very grateful f that you send them. So, Gary, quickly, uh, your closing remarks. Yes, uh, uh, yes uh, uh, Stephen, I will simply uh, uh, conclude by saying that uh, the Constitution make it clear, I think 110 provides that Parliament may by its own standing orders regulate its own procedure. It is very clear in the Constitution. So. Basically, I think that if there's a problem as to boycotts, non-boycotts, participation, non-participation, whatever it is, the speaker is there. He can call both minority, majority side, sit them, on, sit them down, and solve this problem once and for all. I think in the, in the, it will be in the interest of the nation that this problem is solved once and for all. But basically, the issue about this court matter, to me, is a non-starter. It's going to grant the whole nation into a different pedestal, which I think uh, my brother and others shouldn't even go there at all. Right, so you think yeah. it's a non-starter? It's a non-starter. It's, it's a non-starter. So, uh, yeah. Honorable Gago, well, you're closer. Uh, okay, thank you. Let me uh, say in conclusion that the NDC is not in court. Three citizens of the land ah, in are in court yes. in their individual and personal capacities. But, so they let, be, but they belong to the NDC. They belong to the NDC. I mean, really, uh, clearly they are members of the NDC. So my is the same man who brought a case we against Dan Boko Central. We MP. can't disown them, but the suit stands in their names. Mm. The NDC is not in court. We need to uh, make that distinction. Secondly, I want to state a very clear terms that the action of the MPP minority MPs in Parliament is an action which has the potential of grinding government machinery. Okay. And when the NDC to, boycotted to, Parliament to, to, for to 13 days, it didn't grind to, the, no, the no, functions no, of government? No, on that occasion it didn't because I said the reasons for the boycott at the time are different from the reasons for the boycott. So it's just upon the by the, so yes, the reasons. If you boycott and the your reasons, reasons are good, yes, then that's yes, justified. Yes, the reasons are important, absolutely. Mm. Because you don't say that, listen, it is because the president, you are in court challenging the validity of but the I election of the president. No, that. The, because, because if there you is boycott a in parliament, the effect is the same. There is a really. provision in Whether the your Constitution. X or there is a provision y. in Article 4064.2 which clearly makes that conduct unlawful, unconstitutional, sorry. And that is why I think those citizens are in court. When the NDC went to court because their colleague, in their view at the time, had been wrongly incarcerated, there was no provision in the Constitution which specifically had something to say about that conduct. On this occasion, I'm saying that the reason assigned for the boycott is catered for by Article 64.2. Well, and that is what must be uh, upheld. Thank you very much. I'm afraid uh, time is up, so we have to wrap up. Uh, uh, Honorable James Agalga is lawyer and is an NDC MP for Booth on North. Uh, we're also joined by Gary Francis Nemako Marfo, who is a lawyer, and then uh, Dr. Ziblim Idi is a political scientist. My name is Stephen Enti. Thanks for your messages and texts that came through our Facebook and uh, tweet messages and our our text portals. Join us again tomorrow for another interesting edition of PM Express. Good night.